The bands of Her Majesty's Royal Marines are regarded as one of the foremost military musical ensembles in the world. With a rich heritage of performing world-class music, Royal Marines musicians and buglers deliver a range of operational and musical outputs. Join me, Lieutenant Colonel Jace Bertram, Principal Director of Music Royal Marines, and myself, Lieutenant Ann Miller, as we take you behind the scenes, back through history, and look ahead to the exciting future of the Royal Marines Band Service. To understand our roots, we begin here, in the City of London, and the Order of Council from His Majesty King Charles II, dated the 28th of October, 1664. The 1,200 land soldiers be forthwith raised to be in readiness for sea service. To be divided into six companies, each company to have one captain, one lieutenant, one ensign, one drummer, four sergeants, and four corporals. At this time, drummers were essential to communication, acting as signalers on the battlefield, and literally dictating the rhythm of the day. At sea on a man of war, beating to quarters, calling the hands to dinner, and ashore, beating retreat to mark the close of the day. By the 1760s, from the original 1200, His Majesty's Marine Forces had grown to comprise some 50 companies in three divisions at Chatham, Portsmouth and Plymouth. The tactical importance and relevance of these divisions meant that each included 200 drummers. For the next century, drums and later fifes were the mainstay of military music, continuing to provide these specific roles to the fleet on ships such as this, HMS Victory, launched in 1765, with music becoming more accessible and thus more popular, a demand emerged for something more. Through their own subscriptions, the officers in the divisions funded small musical ensembles with strings, wind, brass and percussion employed purely for their entertainment. By the early 1800s, informal bands were being set up on His Majesty's ships. Musicians played a vital role in supplying the ship's cannons with gunpowder, known historically as powder monkeys. In 1802, the Corps earned the title Royal from King George III, instigated by the serving First Sea Lord at the time, Admiral the Earl St. Vincent. This was for the contribution made by Marines to the general service of the Royal Navy. In 1804, the Royal Marine Artillery was formed and, in due course, a Royal Marine Artillery Band established in addition to the three Royal Marine Light Infantry Division Bands. As demand increased, so too did the complement of the bands, with new instruments being added to increase the range of repertoire for the ensembles. And this included the advent of Turkish music, the introduction of exotic instruments such as cymbals and drums. Popularity of the bands included the royal family, who requested that royal marine musicians accompany them on their royal tours. Portsmouth Division Band were the first military musicians ever to travel abroad. By the mid-19th century, this was becoming common practice. By the time this ship, HMS Warrior, entered service in 1860, the complement of the bands and the frequency of the support they gave to Royal Tours had increased. The Portsmouth 
Royal Marine Light Infantry Band accompanied the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII, on a royal tour, for which they were awarded the privilege of wearing the Prince of Wales plumes in their headdress insignia. By the end of the 19th century, Royal Marine Bands were established with instrumentation that enabled them to double as orchestras and marching bands. They provided direct support to Royal Tours in HM ships and Royal Yachts, with Chatham Royal Marine Light Infantry Band proudly wearing the white rose of the Duke of York. Some of these emblems are still used as part of our uniform today. In 1882, the march A Life on the Ocean Wave was officially recognised by the War Office as the march passed, composed by Henry Russell and arranged by bandmaster Jacob Cappy. The early 20th century saw profound development and exposure for the Royal Marine Bands. The Portsmouth Division Bands, under the direction of the senior bandmaster, another Lieutenant Miller, had already started experimenting with putting the Cora drums at the front of the band. At a church parade prior to the coronation of King Edward VII, where all four divisional bands were present, he placed his 30 to 40 drummers at the front of the band. The sight and sound of the mass bands led by the Cora drums was so spectacular, particularly when they played the hymn Onward Christian Soldiers. All Royal Marine bands adopted this practice from then on. Bands had continued to be embarked on His Majesty's ships, but complement and musical standards were inconsistent, something often attributable to the personal wealth of the Admiral or Captain that funded them. So, in 1903, the Royal Navy assigned responsibility for the provision and training of music to the Royal Marines. Ships' bands were populated by Marine musicians from the Royal Naval School of Music, which was established at Eastney Barracks, Portsmouth. They wore a Royal Marine uniform, but with the insignia of a lyre to distinguish them from those in the divisions. Also in 1903, for accompanying all state visits to provide musical entertainment, the Royal Marine Artillery Band was awarded the distinction of becoming the permanent Royal Yacht Band, a privileged duty that continued with the descendant Portsmouth bands until the decommissioning of Her Majesty's Yacht Britannia in 1997. Over the next few years, significant changes were implemented across the fleet. With the launch of the Dreadnought class in 1906, there was a need for more stokers than there were seamen specialists due to the revolutionary new steam turbine engines. There was a requirement, therefore, for more personnel for fire control. And that job was given to the Royal Marines bands. From that point, Royal Marines musicians became operational. The first half of the 20th century was dominated by war and conflict. Musicians and buglers performed their operational roles at sea, with musicians manning the gunnery transmitting stations below the waterline, and buglers on the bridge, sounding calls to convey orders. When those ships were sunk, whole bands were lost. A set of memorial silver drums and a set of memorial silver trumpets are dedicated to those of the Royal Naval School of Music who gave their lives in the Great War 1914 to 1918 and the World War 1939 to 1945 respectively. Purchased from the subscriptions of their comrades, these are displayed here at Portsmouth Cathedral for the annual memorial service. In 1923, the Royal Marines Light Infantry and the Royal Marines Artillery amalgamated to form the Royal Marines Plural, with Portsmouth Division located here at Eastney. All Royal Marine bands adopted the ceremonial uniform of the Royal Marine Artillery, 
whilst retaining their insignia conferred by their respective royal duties. A Life on the Ocean Wave and Heart of Oak were officially adopted to march past by the Admiralty, along with the salutes and advance and review order still used today. In 1948, the Buglers began training alongside the musicians at the Royal Naval School of Music at Eastney. This aligned them closer to the band and also established the combined training we still recognise today. In 1950, the decision was made to amalgamate the Royal Naval School of Music and the divisional bands to form the Royal Marines Band Service, the former becoming the Royal Marines School of Music and moving from here to Deal in Kent. Under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Sir Vivian Dunn, the next decades were to be a period of consolidation and further development. Bands of Her Majesty's Royal Marines were by now regarded as the finest UK military bands in the country and among the foremost in the world. In 1950, Beating Retreat was performed here on Horse Guards Parade and filmed and screened to gain a wider public profile. When the Royal Marines come to town, Londoners go to sea. And today there's something special. The Royals are to beat retreat. As one would expect, Royal Marines bands performed their duties for the funeral of King George VI in 1952 and for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953 on the commissioning of the new Royal Yacht Britannia in 1954, the Portsmouth Group Band was once again assigned to permanent Royal Yacht service. Royal Marines bands were now something of a household name with regular television appearances, news screenings, and performances at national and international sports fixtures, such as the 1966 World Cup final. Little did they know it, but they were in for a bonus and the Royal Marines put on a grand half-time show. The 1953 movie entitled Innocence in Paris features the comic actor Ronald Shiner playing the part of musician Dickie Bird, a bass drummer in a Royal Marines band. And the closing credits of the 1965 Thunderbirds movie features the staff band performing the title music on the parade ground in Deal. 1973 saw the first of a series of annual concerts in this iconic venue, the Nation's Village Hall. That concert series is now in its 50th year, and in that time has raised significant amounts of money for the Sir Malcolm Sargent Cancer Fund for Children, now Click Sargent, and Royal Navy and Royal Marines charities. Despite consistently marching at the front of bands since the start of the century, it wasn't until 1979 that the Buglers became fully integrated into the Royal Marines Band Service. Their uniform refers to their history with a thin infantry stripe as worn by the General Service, but with the dress cords that distinguish them as Buglers. The iconic corps of drums, the oldest specialisation in the Royal Marines, continues to be in huge demand around the world. Developing new techniques and innovative performances, they are often requested to deliver training overseas. In 1992, women were admitted into the Royal Marines Fan Service. This year marks the 30th anniversary of that major change. And a worthwhile point to note is that 40% of the current band service are female. Working in partnership with international military music schools and with close affiliations to civilian colleges and conservatoires, here in Gibraltar Block at the Royal Marines School of Music continues to be the forefront of music training. Operationally, Royal Marines bands have deployed in every major conflict in the 20th and 21st centuries, including the Falkland Islands, Iraq and Afghanistan, and provided support to humanitarian operations such as the Ebola crisis in Sierra Leone. And in the UK, support to military aid to civil authorities. Even now, Royal Marines Band Service personnel are deployed around the UK in support of the NHS. The reputation of the Royal Marines Band Service is entirely due to our predecessors. Their achievements, their performances, their profile. 
and their sacrifices. Those who have fallen through conflict and those we lost in the terrorist attack in Deal in 1989. It is incumbent upon us, the current and future generations, the present custodians of this national treasure, to honour them, pay tribute to them, and live up to their memory. of Her Majesty's Royal Marines are now the only dedicated profile asset available to the Royal Navy, enhancing the reputation of global Britain at home and overseas. And not just delivering world-class music, but protecting the nation in delivering a range of operational capabilities for the Royal Navy, commando force and civil authorities. Structured to deliver a greater breadth of versatility for the future, Royal Marines bands are now designed around small ensembles that combine to form larger ensembles, up to and including the iconic marching bands and concert bands. That agility enables Royal Marines bands to deploy overseas in small or large ensembles, promoting UK global influence, facilitating international diplomacy and engagement, and creating and supporting opportunities to promote UK prosperity. Ensembles now include vocalists and guitarists, in addition to strings, enabling bands to perform the widest variety of musical genres, such as can be seen and heard in our performances both live and online. In maintaining profile for the Royal Navy, our online presence has grown exponentially, seeing millions of views across various social media platforms, with our channels reaching 50 million people worldwide every month. We are incredibly proud of our heritage, where we've come from and where we are going. In over 350 years, we have represented and served alongside the Royal Marines and the Royal Navy, and accompanied the Royal Family for generations past, present and future. It continues to be an honour to perform around the globe on behalf of the United Kingdom on the world stage. The bands of Her Majesty's Royal Marines are a unique force multiplier within defence. With a long history of service to Britain, Royal Marines bands maintain their heritage, delivering versatility, agility and excellence. Configured to meet the demands of operational and musical outputs. Giving performances that blend the traditional with the contemporary. Representing Britain, live and online. In the UK, at sea and overseas. This is your Royal Marines Band Service.